Sunny Bona, welcome. My name is Kai Sitole, and over the next couple of hours, you are going to suffer through me saying things, asking people to come on stage, and asking you to tweet about where we are. It's going to be a lot of things, but I'll try to be as nice as possible. Now, a lot of you are probably under the impression that we are here for a day-long conference, but I can tell you now there's been a big, big change in the program. It is now an awards function, and an awards function that is going to acknowledge a lot of people in the room and actually celebrate the work that they have done and they have achieved. Now, the most important thing about these awards is that I'm not going to delay them until the end of the day. We're actually going to do them now. And of course, I'm going to name the first award. And if you feel that you are the winner of that particular award, you're going to stand up and everybody else is going to clap for you. If you feel that you are the winner of this award, I'm not going to say your name. If you feel you are the winner, you stand up and then people are going to clap for you. Are we ready? Right? So, at this Kahiso Friday Morning Awards, the very first award goes to an individual in this room whose greatest achievement is that he and she woke up this morning and made it all the way to this function. If you feel that you are that individual who has won that award, you can stand up now and everybody else is going to clap for you. I can see there are a lot of winners. Congratulations to most of you. I see some of you did not win that award, but do not despair. There are still two more awards that I'm going to be handing out now. The second award is one award that a lot of South African citizens wish they could get, but of course they cannot get it because firstly they're not here, and secondly I've decided not to award it to them. But this is an award that even citizens across the globe wish they could get, but they simply are not able to do so. This award is an award that is given to those individuals who have won one of life's greatest lotteries. And that is the lottery of being born in South Africa and being a South African citizen here in 2024. If you feel that you are the winner of that award, you can stand up and everybody else is going to clap for you. There's a lot of winners in this room, but I still notice that some of you have still not claimed any awards. So this one is specifically dedicated to you. If you are an individual that is here in the Republic of South Africa today, on this Friday morning, a couple of weeks before a general election, and if you are an individual who has woken up and said, I'm going to be part of this celebratory event today, but also more importantly, if you are an individual who is a change maker and a difference maker in the world and the field of education in South Africa and Africa, this award goes out to you. Congratulations! Now that we are all winners, it's always a good way to start on a winning note. We are now going to move on to some of the more interesting components of what it takes to us to be the winners that we've just announced today. So as you've heard and as you saw, when we said that the first lottery in life that you can win is to be South African, and then there is a secondary lottery of being a difference maker in the world of education, we could already tell that there are a lot of winners in this particular room. But what is of interest to many of us is a simple question of, well, what does it take to be in that particular position? What does it take to actually end up winning this particular award? So over the course of today, we're going to be reflecting on that to say, wait, hold on. If we are going to have these individuals who have won this prize of being rewarded and acknowledged as change makers in the education space, what exactly is it that they do? More importantly, when we look at the motivation that each of them have towards actually making this particular change, what is it that they do in the form of collaborations, in the form of partnerships, and in the form of saying, wait, hold on, we believe in this country, and if this country's future is going to be secure, we need its education system to be sustainable, we need it to be viable, we need it to be vibrant, and this is the work that we're doing. So it's really a very interesting way in which I'll tell you that they've won, and then they spend the rest of the day actually showing you why they are the worthy winners of this particular awards. This is, of course, our education in Durban, and when we talk about, you know, gatherings of this nature, there's always the first question of, wait, didn't we have another one the other day or the other year? What is different today? I can tell you what is different today. What makes today different is that all of us now remember that 30 years ago, we were born. I know some of you look a bit older, but I can tell you that I was born 30 years ago. So when we were born 30 years ago, we were born with the need and the quest to fix a broken state and a broken nation. And everybody acknowledges and everybody knows that education is the one conduit that has the capacity to fix a state, to fix generations. So any of you, 
all of you who actually then took on that baton and said, I want to be in that particular space, you actually put yourself at the epicenter of changing the country. 30 years down the line, we are now in a position to reflect. We're in a position to look at the progress, and also we're in a position to share insights and ideas about what has worked well, and perhaps what still needs to be done better in order to make sure that when we turn 30 and 40 and 50 years as South Africa, we can be able to say, this is why these guys on a Friday morning were awarded for the difference that they had made because this is the implication and this is the impact that we've been able to make on this particular uh, uh, nation. So over the course of today, I will invite you all to really engage on some of what we're going to be deliberating on. And also, given the wisdom, the collective wisdom that sits within this room, we actually want you to then keep giving us some of the nuggets, keep sharing some of the ideas that you say, wait, hold on, actually in our institution or in our sphere, this is what we did and this is how we did it differently and this is the impact that we're able to share. So even those of you that are joining us online, good morning to you. You will be able to actually share some of the questions and some of the insights through the online platforms. And of course, we're going to put them to our delegates here and our panelists who are going to be giving us particular insights. So it's really a day of information sharing. And I think obviously for a lot of you, you probably have a lot of anxieties because I imagine those of you that are in the teaching profession, you kind of believe that this is where you should be, where you should be talking. But today I am the teacher. And the problem with the teacher is that the teacher is also responsible for timekeeping. It is the teacher that then has to say, okay, it looks like we've heard a bit about that. We need to hear something else. So therefore, let us shift and enable somebody else to be able to share some insights. This simply means that you are now at risk of being actually exposed to the worst dancing that you'll ever see. I'm a very terrible dancer. But my dancing is so terrible, as soon as I start doing it, people get so distracted, they pay attention to it. So if I get onto the stage and then I start dancing, people are going to stop focusing on you and then they're going to look at me. And that will be me saying that it's time up. So please be aware that the risk of you going over time is that you're going to torture everybody else with my dancing. And I don't think anybody deserves to see that. So please be alert to that particular dimension. Now, of course, the housekeeping rules is that there are the emergency exits. Well, there will be no emergency, but that is the official term that the occupational health people say we must use. So those are the exits, and also the facilities are available outside them. It is a bit warm, even though people are saying, but where is winter? So you've got some water facilities already on your tables, but there's also some uh, drinking stations out there. So, of course, if you do need to step out for a bit and get that, please feel free to do so. The Cajiso Trust team has put together a very wonderful program over the course of today. They've selected some of the best and some of the most knowledgeable speakers in the field of education, in the field of change making, and in the field of social impact. So as we engage with them over the course of day, always remember that these are individuals whose entire thesis in life is to say, how can I make the country better for every citizen that lives here and that has won the lottery of being a South African like myself? So that is essentially what we're going to be talking about over the course of today. But of course, the Cajiso Trust is an institution that a lot of you know has done a lot of work and a lot of changes in the different spheres. And I could never, even if I wanted to, I could never be able to crystallize and summarize all the work that has been done over the years. But somebody whose responsibility it is to be that institutional archive, that institutional wisdom point, is of course the chair of the Cajiso Trust, Mangone Nzaba, who will now come up on stage to welcome us all. Morning.